Okay. 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 Ok
Does anybody have any comments on that uh, piece of correspondence? It does sound in there to me that the province is looking at changing this again. So uh, maybe uh, we may be in for some change, which uh, that's, that's just my take on the way the letter reads. Uh, and they did do a uh, Ponies uh, Road got uh, through the county here one time looking at it. And you can sort of see that's what was coming. So I think we just have to be very careful with work hard on getting you know, this partnership uh, <clears throat> set up. And, uh, you know, we do need to attract business to this county at all times. Uh, but, they, you know, governments are always not to change structures and things. And, uh, but we just have to make sure we're still, uh, it's still a useful body to us, I guess. Uh, so we'll move on to the second uh, letter, which has a lot of sort of things in it that could be coming down the road from municipal affairs and housing. That was under uh, Mr. Moore's name? Yes. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, it talks about the Coastal Protection Act, which is what the next letter is on. Uh, but it also, I know I have sat in on a lot of meetings to do with this treaty of lumber, and it's uh, still ongoing as to how it's going to be handled. Uh, it comes in in July next month, uh, educational wise, for the first year, but eventually you will not be able to uh, take treated lumber to a CD site anymore. Find another use for it, or it could go to the landfill and guys program, which seems like a waste too if you put that lumber in, the, in there. But uh, this is following what many of the other provinces have done right across the country. Right. To, to, to want uh, that going into the C&D sites because of the treatments of the comments. So it is uh, going to cause a lot of uh, changes, I guess, in how a contract is going to work in order to try and separate that from the non-treated stuff. So anyway, it's on its way. Uh, it's been uh, talked about in the regional chairs for a long time. And uh, there'll be law here for some. Any comments on that? But, Okay, carrying on on that one, uh, the final one. Okay, this uh, one came out of, I uh, actually had a discussion with this gentleman, and uh, the Coastal Protection Act was, uh, has been proclaimed, but the regulations have not to that act. So it has no teeth until, the, uh, uh, until, until those uh, regulations come in, and we all anticipated, or we were told those regulations were coming uh, this spring. Spring's when you're over another couple of weeks, but yeah. uh, it appears now that, that it's almost ground to a halt. Nobody's quite sure why. Uh, we know that we lost a lot in Fiona along our shores, uh, and uh, it, it's meant to protect our shores uh, by not having people built too close to the water is one thing, but uh, the government's line, I guess, right now is that they, uh, they need to consult with some more people generally means that there's been some pressure put on So, but this group in Geology Action Center uh, is attempted to, uh, or is attempting to get all municipalities to uh, sign a letter asking the government to uh, move forward uh, much, much quicker uh, with these regulations so that uh, this uh, act can come into effect. Uh, I did run it by the uh, CAO and he uh, yeah, the, the gist of the letter he agreed was fine. Maybe the wording is a little stronger than what we would have uh, used ourselves, but they're attempting to get all municipalities to uh, sign this letter. So that's why it's uh, here tonight, is to decide if, if we have to decide as a council if we want to uh, sign sign that letter or not. And uh, they're hoping, obviously, to get all the municipalities to sign it. Uh, so, we need some input or decision here from council tonight uh, other than move ahead uh, with uh, the signature on that letter. So, you have any comments? Uh, go ahead, Councilor Bowens. Yeah, and I worked a lot uh, with our group, uh, the outside uh, uh, group for the, uh, the, the Michigan Nova Scotia Power, and they're, they're a well respected organization. They, they uh, these guys are super. They're they're always out there trying to get stuff done for the environment. And, and uh, I mean, even their office in Halifax is it's made out of that walls and that because they don't. They're, they're so into the environment and everything. So 
I think anything that these guys are doing that, that we should very, very well back up. Okay. Uh, any further comments on, on that letter? Or go ahead, Councilor David. Interesting enough, this uh, this topic came up at uh, at the FCM. Uh, there was concern expressed by several public socials, <coughs> social, uh, elected officials of the delay. Okay. We know in some areas at least what's happening is there's a rush on to get uh, get basements or uh, grounds. So let's say over and about having regulations. Um, so there's, a, there's an end run going on to um, to try to avoid the regulations. So I don't know what's going to be the regulations. I don't know what the cost will be for us to enforce them. But I've been in favor for decades of not granting building permits right on the water or right on the floodplains. Both of those seem to me to be uh, uh, unadvisable. So uh, I'm in favor of this motion and got the uh, province to get to it. I mean, uh, four years passed when they passed the actual act. We don't yet have the regulations. We need more study. I, I agree with you that there's pressure being put on to solve delay so that they can develop the uh, rate and almost right off the beach. Uh, that's not wise. Opinion. So I'm in favor of this supporting the policy action center's request to the province. Okay, do you have any other comments? Maybe we should be starting with a motion here then. Uh... Does somebody want to make a motion? Make a motion to, to resign this letter, then we can discuss it as a motion. I'll second that. You'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we sign the uh, letter to uh, the uh, Minister Hallman. Uh, now I'll open up again for further comments before we go to the vote. Go ahead, uh, Deputy Warren. Thank you, Mr. Warren. I guess I'd like to comment something to the AO. One key thing is in there that's too strong, and maybe we better off. Uh, Going to one of the phone. Um, what they were looking at is good. Um, for a few, it's just maybe verbiage like. Reckless development uh, might be a better word than that. But uh, there's just a few words like that. But, uh, and it, uh, at the end of the day, they kind of just jumped out. But uh, the premise is right. I mean, the regulations are almost, yeah. You know, three months ago was the last deadline we heard, and then all of a sudden it's a whole oh, no, no, through the consultation process, take things up. But that was just my kind of initial uh, thing. And if it was coming from us, I didn't think we could say to the other side, and this happens, our writing would be this whole category. This volume is kind of picked up. And the notion of seven here, the, the points that uh, are bigger problems, just the tense and stuff. So I'm not here to. Okay, is there any further comments on the motion before it comes to the vote? Oh, sorry, Dara. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Warden. I guess I'm not really completely familiar with the act and what the changes are and what the protocol is um, are they're trying to. Um, I, I just wish we could have a little more light. If this was 2019 and there should be stalling, what is the reason? Is it just that they're trying to engage? What is the explanation of the giving of the delay? I think I can answer that as best I can from attending some meetings is that there seems to be pressure put on somewhere, uh, you know, by whether it's uh, developers or whether it's, uh, you know, people in the right political positions or whatever, but there's pressure been put on to uh, put the brakes on. Uh, which is kind of hard to believe when you see what they always did last fall. But um, yeah, they're claiming we need more consultation. And uh, 
the system right now will be similar. Uh, I understand similar to uh, if you're putting the consumer in your company, you need what they call a QP, a qualified person, come and uh, look at your property. So in the case of the uh, of the coastal uh, property, you you would have to, depending on the heights of the uh, land and the uh, sea level, uh, you would have to be set back a certain distance. Uh, and uh, that that has a lot to do with the, the heights mostly, but uh, there'd be a certain amount of distance you have to be back. It seems to make common sense. Uh, you know, if you don't want, you know, the ocean stays on or around every year. If you go too close, to the, you're going to be in trouble. But, it adds some cost to us as a municipality, but we don't have that's actually mentioned in the uh, earlier election semester that the, there could be some extra costs. There are uh, building inspectors who will still be the people that, that you have to go to to build that on each year on the coastal water, but uh, they they have to then bring in the QPs uh, to, um, and that's the way it uh, appears to be in the act. Uh, so that will require some more paperwork and some more work for our building inspectors. But uh, that's depending on what comes out of these regulations, I guess, and that's why we need to see the regulations. But, but the letter is simply saying we need these regulations sooner rather than later. I don't know if that helps any, but uh, that's what, the gist of what I got from it. That would be the process. Okay, if there's no further questions, uh, I'll go ahead. Uh, Thank you. Sir. I guess the only thing I agree with is for the state, I'd rather see a county council settle to the municipality other than so That's the only concern I have. Okay. I think that there would be more power coming from the municipality than the outside of the board of us and sign on. That's just my concern. Well, let's vote down the motion, and if it, uh, you know, that, that's, uh, they're, they're making an effort to try and get all of these codes to sign up the same letter so that it's, it, it, it's even more forced to what I know is what they're up to since. Um, okay, all those in favor of the motion to uh, sign this letter, uh, please say aye. 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 And against nay? Three nay votes. Uh, the, uh, so we'll record those uh, nay votes with Deputy Warden Murray and uh, everybody in the front table. Dusty. Carolyn and Brandon. Okay, uh, motion carried. And we'll now move on to the reports. Uh, the FCM conference uh, we'll report from Council of the Department and Council of Borders. So Who's given that report? House President. Explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gordon. As you can see, I wrote that report a week ago. Uh, there's so much happening at these conferences that you really can't get your head around all of it. Um, there's the, the sessions where I, or the, the activities where I learned the most when we sat around the tables at lunchtime, talked to people from Sparrow, BC, or Wellington County, Ontario, or, or Summers in Brunswick to find that if there's if they're rural, you have a lot in common. You have um, certainly uh, uh, rural internet came up virtually every discussion, uh, and I felt good but where we're at compared to a lot of them are having the same issues we're having. Uh, just nothing happened from the big telcos and on phone. Sparrow was, was a retired engineer and worked with Calus. He was spearheading this activity. He's having the same problem with make readies as we have. Um, but anyway, uh, that was certainly a topic of discussion. Uh, acceptable housing was on the agenda. There were panels. People talking about it. there were several different businesses at the trade show. There's, I'm guessing there, 250 kiosks at the trade show. Um, there were several in with uh, various forms of accessible housing. One of the ones that caught my eye because of the price uh, made in Oregon, an 8 by 12 collapsible building uh, at a cost of about 15,000 Canadian. And everything in it that you need, uh, this was designed for transitional housing, like the homeless off out of the tents in the middle of the winter. Um, what? And then, 
on uh, uh, I stayed over a few extra days visiting family and we were traveling Friday evening last and uh, that's right off the side of the here collection of very small buildings. I asked my son, well, what, what's that? What are these very buildings? But there were 50 of them there. Now, the regional municipality of Waterloo includes more than half of those people. Those are cities of Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge. There were about 50 of these buildings inside a fenced in area. He said they had uh, 24 hour security. And they had uh, social workers who went there and tried to work with these people and help them with the issues they had. Um, and they had a large, a larger central building that held these showers and laundry facilities. Well, these many homes, that's the uh, some of them they don't have. They have heat, they have air conditioning, they have bed, you know, possibly two beds um, or a desk. Um, you know, they're obviously wired. But anyway, uh, that struck me as well. Just learning about that, the company is called Pallet, um, as a, a an affordable option to help deal with those that are most immediately. It's not long term housing, it's short term kind of transitional housing. But there's just so many things there that you're exposed to. The trade show, sitting around the table at lunchtime and talking to people from all over, is where you had a real exchange of information. The plenaries, as they call them, when you have talking heads up on stage, uh, they're, they're useful. Um, but you don't have the same depth, you don't have the chance to ask questions uh, that you can when you're sitting around the table. So it's very, very useful. I'm not going to read the report to you. All, all of you, I believe, are capable of reading. Um, and you can pick half a dozen or a dozen different themes. There's a lot going on at these conferences. As I said in conclusion, I believe it's a good investment. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, as a world, did you want to add anything? Or? She says it's in the report about the mental health, as I talked to you already on, and, and uh, the, they're, they're willing to do a presentation for us as well. As they said, education is a big thing when it comes to mental health, and they're willing to uh, train people uh, to, you know, be able to detect what's, you know, mental health and what's, what to deal, how to deal with it. So, uh, I'll give you the literature. Okay, thank you. Uh, does anybody have any questions or uh, comments? Uh, others that were at, at that conference uh, on to add anything at this time or perhaps uh, later? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, we don't need a, a motion on that. Uh, but that for information purposes, thank you. That's a part of the for us. And the next item, uh, I asked our CAO to add this because I want to keep people informed. Uh, we discussed around here a number of years ago now, three or four years ago, I think, you know, about mental health uh, in this county and uh, the service that's available for it. Uh, and we decided at that time that it was best to send it to the mayor's and wardens group and it would be better work on a group for the whole county. Uh, so that group now has existed uh, for that three or four years. For a great period of time, it was just uh, myself and the Mayor of Victor, Mayor of Glasgow. And then we didn't seem to be getting anywhere. We were kind of spinning our wheels, we thought. So we added uh, representation from the other uh, three units from Westville, uh, Stellar, and the Trent. So we now have six people on that, and it's called the Crisis Mental Health Working Group. Mental health is such a broad field that you just couldn't attack the whole thing. Uh, but there are a lot of good groups in this county working on all different aspects of mental health. Uh, but this group works on just on crisis mental health. And I'm going to do a bit of show and tell here tonight. Brought something along with me, and I'll tell the story of it as I go along here. But don't throw it on your toes. Just have a look at it, uh, pass it along, and uh, that I'll, I'll tell the story with it later. Um, so we met with uh, a lot of people. Uh, the three of us originally, uh, we met with <coughs> representatives of the Northern House Zone. We met with representatives of the provincial government. Uh, we met with a lot of people from the Everdeen Hospital. Um, just about everybody we can imagine. We met with people who had, had experiences with their own mental health or family members' mental health. Uh, 
then you have the hospital in particular because that's the hospital you go to around here if you uh, if you have uh, a mental health problem. Um, I often said that if I have a heart attack tonight, they're going to take me to the hospital. And if they can't help me, they're going to send me to another hospital. They're not going to tell me to go home. But if you have a crisis, a mental health crisis, and you take one of your loved ones into the hospital, uh, most likely you are going to be told to, to go home. And we've got uh, a number of people who have come forward and told us what happened. They were told to take their loved one home, make sure the razor blades and the scissors and knives are all put out of the way. In other cases, uh, I know one gentleman that went to help actually, but they said, do you have any guns in the house? Now I want to get them all away. Uh, you know, we, we wouldn't do that with a physical health problem. In the last uh, year, year and a half, I could name off, and I only know on the tip of the iceberg, people I could name off a dozen people uh, in this county have taken their own lives, mostly young people, uh, and uh, very, very critical of and unsupportive of the uh, help they've gotten at the Aberdeen Hospital. Uh, and in some cases at the drug hospital. According to the health system, the way it worked, you know, they divide up one hospital to look after you know, team looked after orthopedics and and the initial looks after strokes and uh, Toro was to look after mental health. But the difference with mental health, you need to have the people your loved ones close to you when you're in crisis. And uh, you know, sometimes one gentleman had to drive his daughter on the way breath. Like you know. Um, and sometimes you'll end up at any hospital. That's the way the, the system is. You can go to any hospital, uh, and, and it just doesn't work for mental patients. So, are we getting anywhere? We, we met with the, the Minister of Mental Health. Now, now have a Minister of Mental Health, not the Minister of Health. So, uh, Brian Comer is his name from Cape Breton. So, as soon as he became Minister a couple of years ago, when, uh, when the new government came in, we requested a meeting with him. Uh, we got one, uh, but it was online, but it was better than nothing. And uh, he understood our position, I think. And at that time, we made an ask. We figured that this has to be more direct than just saying we need better service. So the ask is number one to be able to have mental health, crisis mental health patients that they arrive at the Army Hospital, not to sit there for 8, 10, 12 hours uh, before they get in. <laughs> so that was the number one ask we've got to somehow. Triage uh, those people again. I'll use a heart attack as a comparison. If you go in and you're having a heart attack, you immediately go in, no sitting in the pain. Uh, but that's not the case with mental health patients. In fact, many times if they go in with the uh, police officer, if they've been uh, you know, called to the home, police have, then the police have a <laughs> system for an hour, so that's tying up for a police officer. But the number two ask was that there be help available. Same as there is if I was having a heart attack, there'd be help available or they'd call somebody in. Uh, there isn't that in most cases of the crisis mental health. So uh, that, that was the second half. It doesn't have to be a psychiatrist in the middle of the night. It just needs to be somebody that knows about mental health and how to uh, help that patient uh, you know, get through the night to start with and often there with a loved one. Uh, and the third ask uh, was to have some beds there. There are no beds. There were beds up to 2017 when I think Leo Gavine was the health minister at the time and said they had to close the decision to about out. And uh, yeah, well, they've never never come back. And many people say that what was there wasn't uh, what it should have been anyway, but it was better than nothing. Right now there's no place to hold people, uh, you know, they're being told to go home and make your home safe. For a long while we weren't getting anywhere with that, it seemed. So I suggested to the group one day uh, when we were having a meeting that perhaps we need to make it more personal. Uh, we're talking about you know the so-called patient there and the hospital system and the government and everything. The, uh, so I, I had been offered by two ladies that they would um, come in and speak to our group. They both lost their sons, uh, late teens, early twenties. Uh, not an easy thing to do, but they were brave. And they said, uh, but some people said, well, we don't want to re-traumatize. We heard a lot about re-traumatizing. They say, we don't want to re-traumatize these people. But um, anyway, thank you. they um, agreed to come. And uh, so this painted rock 
that there's definitely made its way around the room. Uh, what's it say? This is a wonderful day. I've never seen this one before. So that the lady, one of the ladies in the son, this was the lady in Colchester County. So things don't work a whole lot better in the Toro Hospital than they do here. We found out. Uh, she's painting these rocks and, and uh, giving them around uh, as a way for her to try and heal from losing her son. But uh, they came and presented to our group. And we had a lot of people there that day from the Northern Health Zone. It must have been that great in the Northern Health Zone. Uh, and after that presentation by these two ladies, about 15 minutes each, and obviously they, would be, they were in tears. They both had a picture of their sons there. And uh, these are bright young people, uh, you know, that we are world needs, I guess I'll put it that way. Um, but it made a difference that day. And when they left, we started discussing things again. All the ones in the Northern House Zone, but the rest of us too, all looked upon as a little differently. They looked, they looked upon with more urgency. That this is something we got to try and do something about. One lady told us one day, well, we'll never stop all the suicides. Now we'll never stop all the heart attacks. Losing people to heart attacks, losing people to suicides, but we sure as hell try. And uh, I think that was the, the point that seemed to uh, sink me in that last meeting we had about a month ago. Uh, and since then, so we've sensed that we've made some progress. Uh, in fact, I've heard from some of the people on our committee, a working committee, that when you go in there now in crisis mental health, you do get triage different. You do get uh, put in a set of place and moved along much more quickly. That was an absolute essential. I'm not saying it's happening for everybody yet, but it is happening much like you would have been in for a heart attack. Uh, and uh, we have a commitment uh, from the uh, lady at the uh, administrative uh, position at the RV hospital uh, to look at. Uh, having 24-7 help available. We don't have that now. You know, if we're in working hours during the week, uh, 9 to 5, 8 to 5, whatever, there'll be some help there. But if you're on the weekends or in the evenings, there, there won't be. But now they, they promise us there will be help there 24-7. Hopefully that follows through. We're going to have a follow-up meeting here soon. Uh, so the one we haven't made much headway yet is on the bids. Because there's simply not any beds available. They said, if you help us, the best thing you can do, if you help us get some of those people on the fifth floor in the senior zones, that will, right now it's just a juggernaut. The beds are so, so tied up, you can't get beds for anything, but it be mental health or whatever it is. Uh, we, we don't, we're not, the committee's not against sending people to Toronto. Uh, but that night when somebody comes in, that day when somebody comes in, we need some emergency beds there uh, so the people can stay. We're not trying to set up another whole mental health ward, but we do need emergency beds that people can stay in until there's an opening in Troy. You don't want to be shipping people to Cape Breton or, or uh, the arms with uh, or the valley or wherever with mental health problems. So I give a lot of credit to those two ladies who lost their uh, sons uh, to be able to come into a group like that and, and talk about their personal situation but it did make a difference uh, i just want everybody here to understand very well that uh, this committee is still working and working harder and we won't stop working until we have we reach those three goals uh, they're absolutely essential for this county uh, i'm sure all of you know people and families in your Communities uh, that have lost loved ones, loved ones to suicide. Uh, it's a, we lost a young man in South Springs just a few weeks ago. Uh, it's a terrible, terrible thing. And we, none of us can put yeah. in our minds where those people were uh, before they lost their lives. We, we just don't know what they're going through. But what we can do is we can, uh, for the families, give them a place where they can go that they know. There's going to be people there to look after us and gain the same group with their heart attack. So that's my report for tonight. I just wanted to let you know that I think we are making some headway. And uh, the time comes when any one of your loved ones needs that kind of help. Uh, let's uh, hope and pray that we'll be there. Does anybody have any questions on what I spoke about tonight? I know I went on a bit. I know our agenda not too long, but I couldn't manage them. Uh, 
that I agree to the nail, like you said, there's going to be here, there's one and this one. Uh, if, if there's no questions, that's fine. I just wanted you to be uh, up to date with where we were. Okay, let's move on to uh, the uh, next part of our agenda is the resolution. Councilor Butler, you have the municipal service plan. Thank you, Mr. Morton. We have resolved uh, that the Council for the Municipality of the County of Petrovaja to the following resolution for municipal service grants. First of all, from District 1, Merit Commission Cemetery Company, $2,100 for lawn maintenance, Southern Server Pioneer Cemetery, $500 for lawn maintenance, Merit Commission Area Recreation, $2,200, Picnic Bar on the yeah, panic brother, panic bar on the two doors. Uh, Pitcher County Public Association for rug booking pits. Adding cemetery, $2,500 for damage from Fiona. Freedom of Bible Church, $1,000 for replacement of the door. St. Andrew's Cemetery, $1,000 for maintenance of cemetery. Kensington Cemetery, $2,000 for restoration of headstones. Telford Cemetery, Nine hundred headstone maintenance. Southern River Community Center, six hundred and twenty-five dollars for water heater for the hall. Kensington District Community Center, twenty-five hundred operating expenses. Red River Cemetery Society, thirty-two hundred for operations and building removal. St. Mary's and Bailey Spring mm -hmm. Cemetery, uh, five hundred for lawn maintenance and headstone re revival. Lismore Community Center, 2500 for a new generator. Barber Moore Memorial, $500 for maintenance. District 1 newsletter, $1,700 for a monthly newsletter. Marathon Schoolhouse Streetlight, $40 for yearly cost. Going on to District number 3, Caribou River Community Hall, $3,000 for hall maintenance. Caribou River Outdoor Cemetery, $2,000 for maintenance. Central Caribou Cemetery, $5,000 for maintenance. Caribou Island Cemetery, $700 for maintenance and tree removal. Waterside Cemetery Company, $2,000 for maintenance. Seaboard Cemetery, $2,000 for maintenance. St. James Mill Dam Cemetery, $1,600 for maintenance. Bayview Community Hall, $2,500 for a new draft on the hall. Caribou District Park Department, $5,164 for replacement of windows. Albertan Crypto Cemetery, $4,000 for maintenance. And Bayview Hall Street Length, $40 for yearly costs. And finally, for District Number 9. Hillside Community Center, $10,000 for kitchen cabinets, doors, and windows. <clears throat> Hillside Cemetery, $2,000 for maintenance. Graceful Walkerville Cemetery, $2,000 for maintenance. Lion State Fire Department, $10,000 for firefighting equipment. And in District Number 10, Moore Lodge Number 17, Odd Fowls. Uh, $3,000 for building maintenance. So, this report. Okay, we have a second. No second. Thank you, Mr. Councilor Wells. Did you heard the reading of the uh, resolution uh, pertaining to uh, District 1, District 3, District 9, and District 10 uh, municipal service grants? Uh, we second. Are there any uh, questions on uh, that resolution? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Yes. Motion carried. Uh, we have Deputy Ward and Murray on our new uh, policy on community connectivity fund. Thank you, Ms. Gordon. The resolution being resolved to the Council of the Municipality and the The Council adopt the following policy with respect to its grant program. Policy number 2023-05-06, community connectivity grant program policy. Purpose is to establish equitable guidelines for distribution of funds for the not for profit sector and charitable organizations in the community. For the municipality to recognize and support the efforts of community organizations to provide culture, social, environmental heritage, 
economic recreation programs, facilities, and enhanced benefit of municipal residents. Well, I'm copying that, so I don't think I read it all. I need to copy something. It's been a while, and I won't worry about that. So we came to the from Nova Scotia this fifth day of June 2023. So with this resolution, it's not going to play against the final. Okay, we're going to the second, then, and this group, of course, our visioning session that we had back three months ago. Uh, Dr. Community Connectivity Fund Policy. Uh, and there's certain groups that are certain uh, types of buildings that doesn't apply to. Uh, and uh, we're already trying it out this year. And uh, once we get this out, we'll be able to move ahead with that in our budget. Uh, so are there any questions or comments on this uh, policy? Go ahead, uh, Councillor White. Uh, thank you, Sir. The um, eligibility number five, I'm just a little concerned that we're making it so broad that are we going to have any like a Another competition for money out of this out of this fund. Here, what we have now with community grants. My understanding is that we're trying to do something for community centers to help them with their with their upgrades. And just when we look at all the other we're going to get to break it, we're going to make more more groups compete with each other. I'm just wondering if that's is where I think the intent is uh, community halls and recreational fields. So yeah. too. Now, may, maybe what's in here, and, you know, uh, or is it up broader than that? But that was, correct me if I'm wrong, but that was the intent. Was, uh, community halls, that's kind of complicated. It, it, looks, it looks like we're opening it up to an even bigger group. That's, that's all I'm afraid of, is that uh, it's going to make more people apply because it may be, maybe you've got better chance of getting somebody out of this one as opposed to our large community grants. There's some way we could. You're going to have a letter to see you okay. and answer that to see you know, for um, So the applicant, the definition of applicants, so, so that's basically taken right over the MGA. So those are the legal organizations that you can grant money to. Um, so a hall could be a registered federal charity that maybe have their incorporated. Um, so that's kind of why it's maybe a little broad, but um, those are the groups that you can actually give money to. Um, some of them probably don't apply to uh, society in the meeting with Children Family Services Act. It doesn't apply, but that's really where the eligibility comes from. It's who you can give money to. Um, I just want to make sure that this going to be geared towards the community census. I've got my least behind, and that's what I want to make sure. That's that. certainly the intent. Uh, I know that was the intent of the uh, <laughs> the councillors that were there that uh, eating or whatever it was two eating, but we were going over uh, you know, how, how to possibly come up with enough dollars for all the projects that we were asked for, not that we did come up with all, but by setting this amount of money aside, it was to be set aside for community homes and, and recreational deals. Uh, whether that can be uh, be more clear. It's clear what isn't available. Uh, Deputy Ward, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ward. Maybe in, in number six, it might be a little more discovered and a little clearer. Uh, Deputy Ward, go ahead. Uh, I think in grade 6A, he sort of spells out what the committee was looking at. Uh, I guess the others in eligibility, uh, but this is what the grants are actually meant to, uh, meant to serve. Okay, uh, Councillor Thompson. Well, if, if we're not sure if something should be in there, why is it in there? As far as, give me an example of what children and families, family services that society would be. What would that be in something that we find? Do, do we, it's uh, a little confusing with yeah. what, what I'm getting at. Okay. Because it's, 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 if a lady person reads us six months from now and they're involved with one of these things, when that's not the intent of what we're trying to accomplish here, they're going to be confused and say, well, I'm eligible because it's there. If section 5A was not there, uh, how would 
Would that affect the policy any if we simply went with, well, we got what's not there under 5B, but uh, under 6, it says what it's meant for. Should we do it that way or do we have to leave that in because it's in the FDA? No, we could come out. Um, that was in the draft policy of the committee. Um, it is in your other draft policy as well. It's simply defines legally who you can give the money to. At the end of the day, your intent is to give it to other groups. Okay, so if somebody were to come forward, like Councilor Thompson did for six months time and said, well, I want to fly to get some money out of this pot, because I'm an advantage exhibition center on an exhibition. Uh, it's not meant for exhibition center under a different uh, category, but would, would that be true? Would they be able to, uh, or come six override that six? They would override yeah, it. Ultimately, that's the purpose of the grant. So if you had a group apply, um, there are a number of criteria here that have to be met. So like an exhibition, that one is an example. It's not physically located within the best value. And you think it was how we That's So it wouldn't qualify. It doesn't check up the boxes. Well, as long as 6A, I guess, would override that, you know, uh, the uh, the other, I realize why it's funded there because that's what's in the MBA and it's in our other grants, but. As long as 6A overrides that, those are the specific things that's meant for them, we're probably all right. Any other questions or comments? No, there are no way to head. Thank you, Mr. Warden. I understand where the confusion could be with that. Um, however, with this distinction made that these are just, in order to even be considered for the grant, this would be eligibility, and then having six being actually what it's for. So you can be eligible. You might be a federally registered charity, but you may not be able to fit into number six. And, oh, I lost it. and I think it's important to have keep number five there only for the fact is, is that um, that you cannot apply for the to, for the grant unless you need that specific eligibility requirement and I think in order for them to be applying for grants of the scale that we've seen this year they would have to meet that same eligibility requirements as well so that would be kind of similar across the board if they're right in saying that right mm -hmm. yeah so if they're applying for those grants they're meeting these required same requirements okay, this is meant for a very, very large project it's not your uh, Four or five thousand dollar credit is when we're refurbishing a hall uh, or building a new one, or the same way with the recreational fields. These are, uh, for the most part, pretty good size uh, projects. Okay, any further questions or comments? Okay, you're done. Uh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. No. I really think this confused is that if this eligibility comment is in our main grant. Yes. I think that covers off eligibility requirements. I think this makes it inclusive in what we're trying to get with this uh, policy. Okay, but it's there, and I'm going to call for the vote on it. And uh, I guess if you're against it, then vote against it. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Against? Okay, one day vote. Okay, let's move on then to uh, our gold play on the three council one. Thank you, Mr. Clare. Whereas the municipality of the county of Picto encourages all residents to be active and maintain a healthy lifestyle by enjoying activities in their own and surrounding communities, whereas the cost of being active in recreational programs or purchasing equipment can be a financial burden for people, preventing them from participating in activities that could improve their mental and physical health. Be it resolved, the municipality of the county of Picto recognized the establishment of a gold play fund dedicated to assisting Picto County residents who are not eligible for other, any other recreational funding so that programming and equipment are more accessible to everyone. Furthermore, be it resolved that the municipality accept donations to the gold play fund from the community. These donations will be matched by the municipality of the county of Picto in the first month of the program to a maximum of $2,000. And a donation receipt will be issued pursuant to the Income Tax Act for all donations. 
Dated at Victor, Nova Scotia, the second day of June 2023, signed by the South Councillor Deborah Wadden and seconded by Council Mary Kerr. Second. Okay. Yeah, we're in establishing a uh, role play, uh, play fund yeah. and uh, been moved and seconded. And I'll uh, just make the comment that uh, something similar to this, I forget the name of it, in Kings County. Uh, and it's been quite successful. I think Council uh, One, you may you know the name of it? No, Spark, is it? Uh, it's been quite successful because we're only putting in the seats like a few thousand dollars, but a lot of residents that want to help uh, our some of our children or young people who aren't able to take part in uh, in a lot of uh, of our physical activity because of dollars. Simply don't have the dollars to buy the equipment, they don't have the dollars to get to where they're going. So this allows our general public uh, to put money into that fund to help some of our children in Victor County or North Victor County. Uh, you know, rather than just all come from the government, it, it comes from people who want to help children. So uh, they've had very good luck, I know. It was one of the, at the spring conference for NSFM, it was one of the uh, Highlights of the you know councils that are doing special things and, and there's quite a quite a uh, show on that. Uh, so that's what it's uh, kind of uh, modeled after, I guess. Put it that way. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments on that resolution? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Against. Motion carried. Uh, now the Community Support Society of River John tax exemption. Councilor Dave Thank you, Warden. Resolution for us, the Community Support Society of River John owns and operates the River John Community Food and Health Center at 2456 River John Station Road, John. Whereas the Community Support Society of River John is registered as a not for profit, and the Nova Scotia Joint Registry of Stocks. Be resolved that the Council of the Municipality of the County of Pickham place the Community Support Society of River John in Schedule A of its tax exemption and reduction policy. Policy number 2023 04 21. Data to S this is the fifth day of June 2023, moved by South Mountain and Parker, signed up to Council Mary Elliott. So Okay, for the reading of the resolution to do with the uh, Urban John Community Food and Health Center uh, to go in the, uh, the tax exemption uh, list here in the municipality. Uh, is there any questions, concerns about that? And hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. And against? Motion carried. And the final one is the cost hearing for J Class Growth's House. Uh, Councilor Power. Thank you, Ward. Resolution to be resolved by the, by the Council of the Municipality of Town and Government, Board and Chief Administrative Officer, be authorized to sign the cost share agreement number 2023 at 016 between His Majesty the King, the right of the province of Nova Scotia, the Municipality of the County and for cost sharing of paving of subdivision J class streets, dated Pecto, Nova Scotia, this 5th day of June. 123, but myself, Councilor Rain, following the second by Councilor D. Parker. Okay, so that's for a cost sharing agreement with the provincial government for our day class roads. Uh, any uh, questions or uh, comments on that uh, resolution? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we may arrange it all to the bottom of the page and uh, come to community announcements. Anybody have any community announcements uh, for tonight? Go ahead, uh, Councillor Elliott. Thank you. Um, I just want to inform that uh, there will be a community meeting on River John for River John and area residents with the Japanese disembarrassing ID. It will be held on June 3rd. At 7 p.m., the location will be in River John Major. June 13th. June, yes, 13th. Oh, it's over. Okay, go ahead and ask the one. Thank you. Uh, just as we're to John, it's been two more heavy meetings with the RCMD this Thursday, June 8th, 
at seven o'clock if they went back to the center and it's for our residents of the district. Well, one in River John is June the 13th, and one in River June the 13th. And they're both at 7 p.m. Yeah. And uh, these are important meetings because they're meant for the RCP to reach out to the community and the problems, concerns, or whatever. That's what they're for, there for, is to find out what they are. There's a lot of concerns with, the again, SFM now is doing something more completely. Uh, there's a lot of concerns out there. Uh, we need to know where we're going in the future, that type of thing. So it's a big issue for sure. Big cost on our end. So uh, if anybody's available, it's not limited just to those two communities. Every councillor can attend any one they want. Councillor Dave Berger. Thank you, Mr. Warden. Uh, this is a hold on from last month. We're just trying to do this on the 16th of May, but because of renovation at the Union Center Committee Hall, it had to be rescheduled. So on the 15th of June, um, there will be a meeting at the Union Center Committee Hall, 7 p.m., for information purposes on the internet. June 15th. June 15th, 7 p.m. Okay. Okay, and uh, our council announcement, go ahead. This is a good news announcement. Good. Springville, um, there's a group of young parents in Springville that have uh, organized a T ball league for ages four to eight or nine, I think it is. Um, it starts on June the 19th, it runs until the middle of uh, August. Uh, this is this is a sort of a feather in the cap for, for the folks of in East River Valley who spent the last 10 years fixing their recreation park up. And there's a lot of young children up there, and a lot of young families excited. They're excited for the playground. Um, there's a hope that we're going to have mines and nets for pickleball in this summer. And there's a um, three on three basketball tournament being planned for the middle of August. Key ball is especially um, important for us at the Spring Bowl because the folks up there can remember the days when, when that ball field was packed with kids and adults playing all age groups every day of the week. There was a ball game up there. So we're quite excited up there. And uh, um, again, I think they deserve a good thank you from, to. Uh, uh, Mike and, and, and the volunteers of the East River Valley Recreation Association for their vote. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Thompson. That might be the only way to hit the ball anymore. They better keep an eye on it. Okay. Any further? Go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, on June 10th, so this coming um, Saturday, uh, we're having a community yard sale, 8 a.m. to 12 uh, noon at the Caribou District Fire Hall. And there's hopefully going to be lots of little pop-ups around. So if you're going to to check out that uh, yard sale, hopefully you'll see others along the way. And um, also on Saturday, June 17th, the next one, well, next Saturday, there's a fundraiser for Lionsbrook Hall, so there's a lobster cake dinner. It's $20. Um, or you can have pay over 12. And um, so I would check out uh, Facebook page um, for all the details and on who you can the contact or tickets. Okay, Councillor Deaver. Thank you, uh, Councillor Deaver, for inviting me. Um, also, on June 10th, this coming Saturday, there is a uh, fundraising dance uh, plan for the uh, uh, Elba, the late Elwood Bridge with Burn and Union Center is a fundraiser for the Victor uh, uh, Norman Call Center admission. I think it's $15 admission, but you're allowed to give more. Um, it is, after all, fundraiser for a very good cause. The money is going towards uh, replacing any uh, cattle slash uh, horse car. Um, yeah, it says here Burn Dance, a member of Elwood Bridge for Pleasant Valley. Eight to midnight. Uh, music by Dance Boys and the Combat Zone K, the Stranger, Jessel Shaw, or Colin Ralph at 19 plus. That's good. But uh, I mean, you really got to look at some of us. 
Okay, and then uh, go ahead, Council Rutland. If uh, folks don't get enough gardens in the, the Turbo area, um, they could come down to District 1. We're also having a district wide yard sale on Saturday, the 10th of June, from 9 until 12. Okay, anymore. I'll put mine on now because I'm too intense, so it's going to be crowded. So, so after you get up to eight o'clock, it's terrible when you're on your way down to uh, uh, down to Don's area. You can stop at the sale ballpark, the former ballpark, now recreational field. They were supposed to have it last weekend, and uh, Saturday it got rained out, obviously. Nobody was upset with the rain. I needed it, uh, but it's this Saturday uh, during the tent. So it doesn't serve the stands, but that gives you a couple of hours to the care room and, uh, before you head down the down dawn. But it's also open at three, I think, in the afternoon. Uh, they're trying to get their recreational field going mm -hmm. as good as uh, it is up in the Council Thompson area someday and uh, be able to have all kinds of events going on. So, so that's on Saturday from 10 till 3. So we have lots going on in the town again. We move into full gear and summertime here. Uh, this is the time we uh, we talked a lot about community, and we passed a bit, we passed this fund tonight to, to help with our hall, which is recreational fields. It's really important to uh, keep our communities uh, alive and well. And uh, I know we mentioned that at the visioning session. I don't know if it's in the works or not. I asked the PAO yes, but uh, a few years ago we had a fund. I forget what it was called. Each community was able to get the size of the dollars or whatever to have a special summer event. Is that the uh, it's in the works? Okay, so that's good news for our communities. There will be a little money available. So if a community wanted to have a, a special time for children and, and children not so young, uh, you know, that they would come together. It's just a, a celebration of our community. What's the other one called that we had to the Queen's Canada yeah, yeah, one best day. That was the year we had it. Yeah, so that's a good thing. It won't cost a whole lot of money. Uh, if there's no uh, further uh, any announcements, I'll uh, move to adjourn. I don't need a motion, so I'll just announce it. We adjourn. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.